Hey guys, this is Scott from the Clay Lab. Welcome back to our channel. I know it's been a little bit over a month since we did a video, but as you're about to see, we've been working pretty hard. We're really excited about releasing this video today and telling you more about the US Open coming up in March 2023. If you think about it, tell a friend about the Clay Lab, especially if they're interested in clay target shooting. It always helps us out in a big way. For today's video, the guys and I are in the Sonoran Desert. This is a large desert that spans the U.S.-Mexican border. Specifically, we're just west of Tucson, Arizona at Coyote Springs Sporting Clays. Now, Coyote Springs is actually a component of Tucson Trap and Skeet Club. This legendary club is one of the largest in the world. Most importantly, Coyote Springs is going to be playing host to the 2023 U.S. Open and FITAS Grand Prix. As you approach through the desert, you'll see the entrance come into view. As you pull in, there's more than adequate parking all along the left and right side. You can see most of the left side is RV parking and just to your right is the clubhouse. As we pulled up to the clubhouse, we met up with Tim Miles. He's the director for the US Open in 2023 and has been at this club for over two decades. As always, our plan with these videos is to make you feel like you've been here before. So we're gonna let Tim show us around. All right, Tim, so if you don't mind, maybe walk us through the clubhouse a little bit and show us how things will be for the U.S. Open. You betcha. So you'll enter through the front doors here, and then we'll move right in. The registration will be in this room. Okay. Um, this is typically where we hold all the score chaser stuff. Um, you can see the 22 um, Western Regional. That was the map for that. That'll be the same thing with the U.S. Open. And then um, Joey, Melissa, probably Heather, not sure if, uh, what score chasers people will be here, but they'll all be set up here. Um, this is registration, and as we roll through, after you're all done, um, you'll roll into the cashier area, which there'll be three or four cashier windows open, plus a practice window or two, um, and that's where the cashier windows are. Also here at Tucson Trap and Skeet and Coyote Springs, we have a uh, full restaurant and bar. Okay. Uh, a couple vendor areas. This is the main lobby as you come in. And um, then this is the, the restaurant, and um, Very nice. there's a full bar, and uh, it seats uh, right around 200 people inside. Wow. So, yeah, and then we'll have a tent outside that'll uh, seat probably between four and 500 okay. outside. Yeah. And will all the food be, be in these couple of areas? Yeah, so basically there'll be a little bit of food in here, and the majority of the food will be outside. Okay. Okay, there's a grill just outside, and then um, we'll have three or four... Um, food vendors near the tent outside too with the vendors. Gotcha. And, uh, as you stroll through this way, um, the bar will be open every day at three o'clock. Okay. okay. So if you're done shooting by three, then, uh, then the bar will be open. And then uh, as you walk out, the vendor building is here on the right. Um, and then just beyond the vendor building, there'll be um, the two big tents and then uh, all the food and then oh, yeah, continue the vendors, yeah. And then uh, the matrix fields will be out front here. There'll be, um, there'll be one that'll be set up here, and then there'll be another matrix field that'll be set up to the right, and then the five stands will be just oh. east of that. And then we'll have um, some trap and skeet open for practice, and then there'll be a full um, practice course that will basically run um, on the skeet fields also. So far, I've got to say, the other guys and I were completely blown away by both the size and the quality of these facilities. Next up, we headed over to the Ammo Barn with Tim to check out what they had in stock for the upcoming U.S. Open. In here, he had 100 pallets of ammo. In light of the ammo shortage, this is a really a remarkable quantity, and I think it's pretty safe to say that you can get whatever you need. So we have, um, so we have AA, we have Federal, we have Remington, we have J&G, we have B&P, um, and uh, there's plenty of... Uh, Plenty of good stuff for you all to shoot. On any given day, um, we also have about 100 pallets of targets that we keep on hand all the time. And White Flyer's done a great job with keeping us in everything. The guys and I were really impressed by that central complex, especially the clubhouse. I had been off in the background filming drone videos, and so they're picking me up and taking me on the course.
Now, as you might have guessed, this place is massive. Leaving the skeet and trap complex, you go down a path and out towards the sporting clays courses. To the north are the main event courses and practice course, and out to the west, you encounter the green super sporting course and the FITAS course at the far westernmost point of the complex. What we're gonna do in this segment of the video is show you what's not on the map. We're gonna show you what the course looks like. We're gonna show you the terrain and have Tim talk us through all the ins and outs. We're located on about 495 acres um, here in the Southwest desert. And uh, on your right hand side, you'll see there's 50 ATA trap fields, um, 13 NSSA skeet fields, five international bunkers and six international skeet fields. We've got uh, 206 RV spaces. They're um, fully serviced with 50 amp sewer and water. And then as we approach, um, we've got a vendor row here that holds uh, 42 vendors, plus a vendor building that has five permanent vendors on property um, with two gunsmiths that are here um, about 11 months out of the year. For the season, we're full 75% of the time. Okay, yeah. so people just, they park them out here and they, they use them as they come back and forth to the club. No, they stay. They stay. Yeah, you heard that right. They've actually got 225 full-time residents out here at Tucson Trap and Skeet. That's pretty unbelievable, but it goes to show you what a destination this is. So as you head west from the clubhouse, you find an entrance to all the courses. And this is a little side road that takes you back to all the main event courses, super sporting, fee task, Pretty much everything you're gonna shoot is in this direction. This also marks the entrance to the actual Coyote Springs portion of this facility. We've had over 20 inches of rain each of the last three years. You can look at the grass yeah. and see it. Yeah, your grass looks a lot different than our grass. Yeah, it's as- <laughs> As uh, do the trees. Yeah, well, these are mesquite trees and the mesquite trees are, you know, they're anywhere from 12 to 25 feet tall, typically. We'll just roll around the green course first. Okay. All right. So as we shoot through the green course, the green course is uh, more of our um, southwestern uh, forest, if you will. It's the Mesquite Bosque. Okay. So it's really, uh, we're still plenty open, but uh, this is um, probably as uh, vegetated as it gets. Gotcha. So um, a little more backdrop and yeah, it's different uh, view as far as like depth perception of targets and things like that go. Yeah, and uh, that's one of the things that a lot of people say they come out here and they oh. just say man the targets are so big yeah um, and really what's interesting is if I I explain this to a lot of guys what you really should do before you come here is you should probably do a, a little work oh. on your depth perception and as you can see we shoot everything towards the mountains right there's three machines on each one of these these is our uh, super sport course basically yeah. and oh. as you can see when you stop at one station you can't see another station typically yeah. Um, you can see the flags, which we mark everything with, I like that. with the green flag, so you know you're on the green course. Well, I like the A and B, too, the, the trap identifiers. Yeah. It's kind of nice, too. This points out one of the things that the guys and I really appreciated about this course, and that's these different colored flags. As you can see here, we're on the green super sporting course, but that also applies to the blue course and the orange course, and so on and so forth. Yeah, check this out, guys. Wow, I just flew Go right ahead by and the get, truck. Yeah, you might want to check cool. that. Yeah, if you can get him. It's a Harris Hawk, if you know what a Harris Hawk is. Yeah, uh, yep. can you stop for a second? Yep, there absolutely, get him. Right there. Yeah, so you're going to see um, a lot of uh, animals out here. We have lots of javelina, um, tons of deer, um, quail. I basically built habitat for the quail because they, they're they very vulnerable to, like, roadrunners. There's not a roadrunner does not have a predator. Okay. And they're protected and they kill everything. Wow. Yeah, so it's just one of those things that you, the best you can do is well, you have to build habitat for to the quail. protect the others. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. Obviously, we have all the reptiles also. We have the Rocky Mountain um, Rattler. Um, we have the, the Desert Diamondback, and we do have the Mojave. And the Mojave, they, they call it a seven-step snake. Seven steps until you're dead? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Here's the thing, it's just like anything. Um, if you mess with something, it'll probably mess with you. Right. Right. If you don't mess with something, it probably isn't gonna mess with you. It, sure. 
Yeah. Unless it feels threatened, it's exactly. generally going to go on about its business. Yeah, exactly. Don't be shooting them. Just, uh, just let them roll into the desert. They don't want to be around you, guaranteed. So as you guys can tell, I'm a sucker for wildlife. But that's absolutely an appeal of this place. Just knowing that that wildlife is out there, knowing that you're in the Sonoran Desert, it's such a unique environment, and it just adds to the overall experience of shooting here. It's one of the big reasons I'm so excited to come back. The one thing the guys and I consistently talked about this entire trip was how unique of a shooting environment this yeah. is and how it simply just can't be missed. As Tim's about to explain, a lot of that comes from the actual vegetation and that directly affects what types of targets they set. So as far as the vegetation and what it'll look like for the US Open, um, it'll look, the trees will be obviously a little greener. The grass will probably be green at that time it will still have a lot of the dead stuff in it because of the growth that we had this year. Uh, and it'll kind of just depend on um, you know, when the winter actually finishes. I mean, look at us, we're out here in the desert as opposed to standing out there in the concrete, right? right yeah. And I think that's the cool thing about it. And that's the other thing, when you look at this place, I could mow the edges, I could manicure it a little bit, but that's not the desert, right? All right? Nobody's doing that. What I suggest to everybody is do a little bit of homework before you come here. Um, there's, I don't throw 75 to 90 yard targets like everyone says, okay? People just perceive it. It, perceive it looks it so. that way. Our job is to entertain you. Oh. It's not to beat you. Everybody gets a fair go. You give them time, you give them profile. Okay. And what profile means is, is profile um, is uh, basically, um, that's edge, okay? And I give at least 50% profile. That's 100% profile. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's 50% profile, that's edge. So my point is, um, you don't limit people's ability to shoot a target by edge, speed, and distance. Okay. You just don't do it. Um, be safe, be entertaining, give everybody a fair go, everything's all good. Yeah. Every time. Makes good sense. Don't come here scared, come here prepared. Yeah. Okay, and intentional. Yeah. And just look at the target, you'll do fine. Yeah, and excited, like come to have a good time, see something you haven't seen before, try something new and, you know, you know, have a good time with it. Next up on our tour was the fee task section of the course. And we were all really excited to see that they actually have fee tasks set up across eight stations year round. I don't recall going to any other places that had the fee task parkour set up like this. And it was nice to be able to practice. This is parkour one. Um, and uh, as you can see, there's three pegs here. And this is one of our carts that you can drag anywhere on the parkour. And you can go out and shoot on the road in any direction for as far as you care to shoot the target. If you want to shoot 100-yard targets, you can shoot them. Okay. You know, go ahead and on your call. Pull. Oh, alpha comes from the sign over there. Okay. Um, and again, we can talk distance if you like. So what's that look like to you? Oh, I'm going to mess this up. No, I don't think so. Go ahead. I would say... 35. Okay, it's actually a lot more than that, but go ahead and look at it again. <laughs> See, I did mess it up. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Pull. Okay. So about right here, it's about 49 yards here, but right here, you are correct. It crosses about 36, yeah, and kind of quarters away from you a little okay. bit. Okay. All right, and Bravo. So I better shoot it early, is that what you're saying? No, not <laughs> at all. You've, it's, it's amazing. One of the other things here you have to understand is you're in a low humidity climate, okay? So there's really nothing to tear your pattern apart. There's no humidity you're cutting through. Okay. So believe it or not, I see a lot of guys shoot a lot of this stuff with skeet and icy. Really? Oh, it's crazy, yeah. Okay. Pattern stays together for sure. After checking out the fee task area, we headed over towards the main courses. These courses stretch over the entire northern portion of the complex and really show a wide variety of the terrain that's out there. What the guys and I are going to do here is take you out onto the main courses and show you what the terrain looks like and talk about the difficulty of each various course. So heading north from the clubhouse, you reach all four of the main courses. First up is the blue course, which is probably the easiest. It's got fairly open terrain. Moving just to the west of that, you get to the orange course, which is going to be set up as a practice course. Just beyond that, you get to the white course. 
uh, which is a little bit tougher. And then the red course is at the far western portion of this, and that's the most difficult of all. As you go up in difficulty, you see slightly more technical targets. One thing we really want to do is help you guys understand how the layout of this course works and help you find relevant landmarks. So the first landmark to be aware of is what you see there, giant cactus. So what I'm talking about is a saguaro cactus. Just for reference, that's me standing there. I'm six foot four. That's one big cactus. And that's not even the one I'm talking about. The one I'm talking about is probably even 10 feet taller than that. These cacti can actually get up to 40 feet in height. They're pretty much like the trees in this area. As you move north, you'll see a Sporting Clays parking lot if you want to walk the course. Now, as we move along, you'll see on the left side of the screen is the white course. On the right is the orange course, and the mountains are in the background. So that mountain range is always going to be to your north, and you're going to tend to be shooting towards that or in towards the center of the course. Uh, and so that's a constant landmark that you can use uh, to help you figure out where you are. The other big thing to look for are these different colored flags, and that clearly indicates which course you're on. I am amazed that more courses don't do this. It seems so simple, and I think it works especially well here because the terrain is so open. It allows you to see these flags from a distance. It's a really cool spot, and uh, it's, not the, it's not the big woods and trees and stuff, but it's, it's definitely big sky. Yeah. You know, and yeah. uh, it's Beautiful pretty cool. Background. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Good. All right. It's good seeing you, man. Yeah, you too. Appreciate you. Yeah, thank you. After finishing up our tour with Tim, we met up with Julia Gilman of HOA Sports Management. She's the founder of that company, and they have a really interesting premise. What was the beginning? They go in and they help these big shoots organize trappers, arrange sponsors, and just do all the things to make the event easier for both the shooters and for the person hosting the event. Oh, and as you can see, she's one heck of a shot. I'm Julia Gilman. I'm the founder of HOA Sports Management, and I'm one of the event managers here for the 2023 U.S. Open um, at Tucson Trap and Skeet at Coyote Spring Sporting Clays. We are going to start shooting on March 27th through April 3rd, right here in the heart of Tucson. So one of the things that we really focus on here at Coyote Spring Sporting Clays is the hospitality aspect when we're putting on a tournament. No one does it better than out here at Tucson Trap and Skeet. Uh, we make sure to have oh. water available at every single shooting station, ton of porta potties, trash cans. All those little details are covered from top to bottom. Those things we know make a huge difference when you're a competitor out here. So we like to make sure that all those little details are taken care of every single day. We are also really excited to be bringing in some excellent food vendors. And those options will rotate throughout the day so you don't get sick and tired of eating the exact same thing throughout the week. We are right in the heart of Tucson, so there are so many options as far as accommodations and hotels. Eight minutes down the road is Casino del Sol. Um, it is a four-star casino and resort that also has a sister hotel. So there is excellent accommodations just right down the road um, and a ton of fun for when you're done shooting as well. Aside from Casino del Sol, we have other casinos, Desert Diamond, um, and then your other typical hotels we also have within about a 15-20 minute drive, um, which is just towards the main airport here in Tucson. Bringing the U.S. Open out west here to Tucson is such a unique experience for competitors. Uh, rarely do we get the opportunity to shoot out here in the desert, let alone at an environment like this at Tucson Trap and Ski. So coming out, whether you're coming from the East Coast, the Midwest, the Southeast region, coming from Texas, wherever you might be coming from, you're bound to have a brand new experience. And it's so unique shooting out here and being in this environment that it's something you're not going to want to miss, especially when we're throwing a U.S. Open. So we have an excellent team putting on the U.S. Open here. Um, our team is led by Tim Miles. He is our head honcho here. Uh, but we also have people such as Joey and Melissa Wright that are coming in to handle registration, as well as Casey Chase with Score Chaser. We have the best of the best from the industry coming in to help put on this event, all the way down through our trappers and our referees we're bringing in from across the country to make sure that we have the best event possible for our competitors. So aside from your typical main event, prelim, super sporting, we are offering American field sporting, which we're really excited to be offering. We will have a competition five stand, um, as well as the Matrix. The Matrix is a newer side event um, that's being thrown. It's been thrown at a couple different regionals. It was thrown at nationals this past year. But we are going to be throwing two fields of the Matrix. We'll have a master and double A field, as well as an A through E field. 
So we're really grateful for a great group of sponsors to be coming in and supporting the U.S. Open this year. As far as our industry sponsors, you'll see Promatic, Winchester, Beretta, Kriegoff as some of our major players. We're also really excited to be welcoming in some outside industry sponsors to this shoot as well. Um, Vortex, the Bino company, will be coming in as well as Kingsbridge. They are um, a business brokerage firm that we are very excited to be involving in the Sporting Place community, um, and they are stepping into the U.S. Open as a sponsor as well. To put on the U.S. Open, we can't do it without our trappers and referees. So when it comes to sporting trappers, we're looking at bringing in close to 120 sporting trappers to put this shoot on, which is a huge number. We are really lucky out here in Tucson to be supported by some organization, organizations such as Pima Community College. Their athletic department has really stepped up and given us some great... Um, athletes and some great connections and they come out and help us out on the sporting courses. They have always done a phenomenal job for us. They were out here at the Western Regional this year, um, earlier this year in March. So we're looking forward to welcoming them back. We also have a great outreach to the community. There's a lot of 501c3 organizations that we work with here in Tucson and kind of the neighboring cities um, to bring people in and they step in as our sporting trappers as well. When we look towards five stand, fee task, AFS, kind of those more specialty um, courses that require a little bit more detail when you're refing, we bring in those trappers. So we understand that this is the U.S. Open and we are trying to create a phenomenal environment for our competitors. So bringing in those really experienced five stand fee task AFS refs gives us the opportunity to make sure everything runs as seamlessly as possible. After our conversation with Julia, she headed out onto the course with us to help us kind of try out some of the techniques that Tim had told us about. Now, as you'll recall, he said that depth perception is everything at this course because the background's not what you're used to. First up, we headed to a portion of the course that had full height vegetation. These are gonna be those mesquite trees going up to about 25 feet. Now, I'm always excited to get out and shoot a new course, but I was especially excited today because I was gonna be trying out my new pattern stock from Jim Greenwood. We had just made these the weekend before. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you can catch our next episode where we go in depth with the entire stock making process with Jim Greenwood. We're going to take you all the way from doing the pattern stock in this first episode to eventually choosing wood and creating a final stock. But this is a fascinating process and it can't be missed. Take this wagon on the road. Yep. That's super convenient. I mean, it's, it's a great system. I'm surprised you don't see it in more places. I might hit that one. Pull. <laughs> I can still miss that though. <laughs> Charlie, pull. You said might. You can get that one. All right. And pull. And delta. Pull. Yeah, I can get that one. Pull. You can hit all of these. Oh, I can. The question is, will I? Well, the beauty of it. So, so this is nice. All right. Pull. Nope. Lost. Don't sound so enthusiastic about it, Jeremy. I was trying to be like the rest are. All right. Echo. Pull. That's better. Okay. Bravo. Pull. One. Charlie. Sorry. Oh, that's, that's all good. Good. You have to practice back here. <laughs> you need a clipboard and pull. One and one. All right. Double your point. Pull. Got it. All right. So it wasn't that far? It was pretty far. <laughs> that was like three bathtubs. Oh, crap. Pull. Ooh. On the course today, the guys and I are using our Falcon Pros from Ranger. In particular, we're using the React AI lenses. If you go back and watch our video that we did on these lenses, you'll see exactly why we love them so much. With the more vegetation in the background, I'd be okay with using a mid-light lens, but it's so bright outside that I went ahead and used the bright light lenses. 
I highly recommend going back and checking out our video with Dr. Colo before coming out to Tucson. The reason for that is he goes into a lot of information about depth perception and about trying to keep your pupil as small as possible. Next up, it was Jeremy Smock's turn, and we headed over to the orange course for some medium height vegetation. These are the smaller mesquite trees and larger bushes. The challenge here is that they look like normal trees, but they're a lot smaller, right. and so it really oh. gets your perception of distance out of whack. Mm. As things opened up, it got brighter, so oh. Jeremy went with the bright light lenses. Pull B. Pull. Now the other thing I think Dr. Colo would tell you is that when it's really bright, it's important to have good anti-reflective properties for the lenses that you're wearing. If you're ever interested in trying out some higher end glasses like the Rangers, come find us at one of the events. We actually have demo kits that you can try out. We also have a discount code. We don't get any portion of that, but it's just something that we do for our viewers. So definitely check it out. Oh. On my head. Next up was JP and we headed into some terrain that was wide open. I affectionately call this straight up desert. Now we've probably all shot in open fields before, but with the real scrubby oh. vegetation along the ground, reflections coming off of the sand and the mountains in the background, this can still throw you off quite a bit. Oh. Bravo, that was what? Center field. Oh. What did they center field my ass? That's where it comes from. Where it comes from, maybe. <laughs> that's not my job, that's your job. Delta. That was over here, right? Oh, sorry, that was this guy. Oh. Oh. That was the one I didn't respect the most. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, I like it. It probably won't surprise you that JP continued the trend of using the bright light lenses. This was the most open environment and you were getting a lot of glare, so oh. it actually helped quite a bit. Paw. Oh. Ooh. Pa. I'm sorry, I, I can't hit that D target. Pa. So that station still had a little bit of vegetation, so we moved on to an area that had next to none. Pa. Okay, so that's fine when it's moving, but when it's coming down, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, just look at the bird. Oh, oh, Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 As the sun started to set in Tucson, we met up with a couple people who we felt like would be able to give us some great insight into what it's like shooting in the desert on a regular basis. Both of these shooters represent the United States on the international stage, and that's Karen Shedd and Gavin Miles. We're obviously out here in the desert. Um, what should shooters be doing to kind of 
both physically prepare for the upcoming U.S. Open and mentally prepare? Because I know that's something that you guys focus on a lot. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so I, I lived three years away from, from Tucson, away from the desert. And uh, when, when I was living in Texas, you know, very humid environment. And then my first tournament that I came back here, um, I didn't realize how much my body had adapted to humidity compared to no humidity. And, and I didn't drink enough water and um, I, I experienced some, some heat exhaustion that first shoot that I came out here and it wasn't even that hot. I mean, it was right. 80 degrees and, and um, you, you just don't sweat very much in the desert, even if it is hot, but especially like this time of year, it's, it's cooler and drier. And so um, n no matter what, always be hydrating, but not just with water, with, with salt as well. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that we, we both do is try to, you know, get salt in our body first thing in the morning and that helps us stay hydrated and, you know, keep those electrolytes up. Biggest tip that I'd have for someone shooting in the desert for the first time would be to actually try to visually mark out your distances. That's the biggest thing is because you don't have trees, you don't have all the big green stuff that gives you good depth perception. So most people's depth perception is thrown off. So mark things out and try to mm -hmm. treat it just like you're hunting and trying to read how far that animal might be mm -hmm. uh, would probably be the biggest step. And then also you don't have trees to necessarily mark stuff with. Use the, use the mountains, use the, the peaks, use the valleys is the mm -hmm. biggest thing. Yeah. yeah, that's what I would say is definitely use your background, use the mountains, use whatever you can see in the distance and, and kind of uh, put some anchors out there to know exactly which bush the, the machine's coming from. Because that's one of the things that you'll notice out here if it is your first time, you see very few machines out on the sport and clay and feed test field. Um, out, if they're, if they're utilizing the, the trap and skeet fields, you'll, you'll definitely see machines there. But once you get out actually to the course, you, you won't see any machines. Mm -hmm. The first thing that comes to mind is a steakhouse called Daisy Mays. It's just 15, 20 minutes away from here. Kind of like a, a ranch type steakhouse where yeah. they cook all the grill and the, or cook all the steak and the grill outside. Um, so I would say that would be my favorite one. As far as a local um, spot goes, I, I absolutely love Daisy Mays or, or Charo Steak in Del Rey. That's probably, I'd say maybe my my second or third favorite, but there's so many restaurants here that are incredible to, to eat at. I, I've heard that Tucson is actually per capita one of the um, highest restaurant towns that there is. Um, so there's so much variety of food. Mm -hmm. um, you've obviously got the authentic Mexican that you yeah, can you get can't anywhere. Go, you can't go wrong if you look up a <laughs> high rated Mexican restaurant. Yeah, but it's okay. so diverse as well. So, and you know, there's a lot of really cool different parts of town. Um, you know, while you're here, check out. Uh, northeast Tucson that's kind of where I grew up but then there's Marana on the south or excuse me on, on the northwest side and Oral Valley and just all different parts of Tucson that are are so beautiful and the more you get towards the mountains um, the more the topography changes and whatnot too so it's a it's a pretty cool place to be. So with that we wrapped up a full day of filming at Tucson Trap and Skeet Club in Coyote Springs. This was a beautiful facility and we left completely excited for the U.S. Open. We left the range and headed to a local Mexican restaurant for dinner with plans for another full day of filming the next day. Apparently it rains in the desert. Now we happen to be in Tucson on one of the, I don't know, 20 days that it rains there every year. Uh, so we made the most of it and visited Vendors Row. We had seen this driving by the day before but we're so busy filming outside that we didn't get a chance to stop in. So a nice rainy day was the perfect opportunity. Our first stop was Game Masters, where we got to check out some really nice high-end Kriegoffs, Parazzis, and other brands of shotguns. Fortunately, all three of us made it out of there with our bank accounts intact. Howdy. Hi. It's a beautiful place you got here. Well, thank you. Well, this is McKnight Gunsmithing. We okay. work on all the different guns. Um, I'm factory trained from Kragoff, Kohler, Guarini, Blazer, Zoli, Ludig, and work on all the rest. And so we just try to keep the shooters running and keep their guns in good order. We do a lot of annuals, and we also do a lot of new pads um, and things like that just to keep them going. Occasionally they'll have breakdowns, broken ejectors, chip firing pins, that kind of thing. So we do a lot of that. We do sell guns on consignment. We have, you know, the ones on the wall, different, you know, all different makes. 
and as you said, the cannon. Yeah, I'm interested in this cannon. Can uh, you tell me a little bit about it? Uh, you know what? It's a it's a Napoleon cannon. It's a how functional model, I guess it would be. Yeah. Um, that one's a 68 caliber black powder cannon. It has been shot. The current owner, I don't think ever did shoot it, but he, he decided he's not doing that anymore. So just wants to sell it and buy something else. Well, you know, it's something great for on the desk or oh, yeah. <laughs> keep the neighbors at bay <laughs> <laughs> in the little container on the side. If you open it up, there's a couple of the musket balls in here. Yeah. That's you have to really pull this cool. out of the way goes forward and then back yeah. and out and then you can open this up my fingers don't fit oh, in there very well go ahead <laughs> yeah look at the little musket balls let me pull one out for you that bad <laughs> boy i'm an artilleryman by trade so there you this go this is what i like oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, you we just to. do upgraded cannons that's all we do yeah like, that's awesome. For a mere eight hundred dollars, it can be I yours. I know, and that's what was amazing. <laughs> and I've spent well, I mean, more. I think I, it would be a whole lot more than that. Well, I've spent more money on dumber things, so. And it's a it's a good looking cannon. It Whoever is, did it's you know? Pretty. You remember you watched the Terminator, and Arnold Schwarzenegger was riding the motorcycle with the lever action mm -hmm. shotgun. Yeah. Well, this is the same shotgun Winchester only reeled. The only thing is, this is bigger than his. That's a ten gauge. What? Wow. <laughs> can you even so get ten gauge shells? Yes, you can, but you wouldn't. You would want to load them custom for that because it was it. You know, it was made in the late 1800s. You would want a black powder, really light load if you did shoot it. Now the owner did tell me he shot. He has shot it. In fact, I think he took a goose with it. But and like that this is an unusual parazzi too this is a actually a side plate or a side lock parazzi over and under you don't see that very often usually there they have a dropout trigger in that this is like the side by sides where they actually have the hammers and everything attached to the side plate Johnny, it's a side I still lock i don't know what this is and what this does it's too complicated <laughs> <laughs> it's a true side lock not just a side plate though like say the zoli up on top of there that was a Custom engraving by a man named Giliazzi out of Italy, who passed away a few years ago. And he was very famous for that scene. It's called The Goddess of the Hunt. That's probably the most expensive gun in my shop, but about 45000 Yep, we better get out of there too before someone goes home with a cannon. Hey, Ron, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good to see you, Jeremy. Nice to meet you. Uh, cool. Um, do you mind telling us just a little bit about uh, your setup here and uh, a little bit about Elite West? Not at all. So we uh, are affiliated with Elite Shotguns National. Uh, we just run the West Coast, everything west of Colorado. We got a store here at Tucson Trap and Skeet. Um, our flagship guns are Kohler's, Zoli's, Caesar Garini. We got Carrie Benelli and CZ and a bunch of other brands as well. Okay. Um, We've got a store in Medford, Oregon, a store in Salt Lake City, Utah, and another store up in Wasilla, Alaska. Okay. Um, and then we, you know, trade inventory back and forth with all the rest of the elite stores to, to service everybody nationwide. So. Gotcha. And you're part of this permanent vendor row here at uh, Tucson. Um, you guys are here pretty regularly. It sounds like you're here for all the major events and then some of the smaller ones maybe too. That's correct. Yeah, we, we usually... Uh, open up this store early October and stay open pretty much all the way through the last big event out here at Tucson Trap and Skeet. Sure. We will do annual service on Kohler's. Everything else we pretty much send back to the factory, but we'll change out springs, pins, and do all the basic stuff. If they need the locking block, that needs to go back to the factory. But We've got the, this is a relatively new uh, round body receiver out by Kohler. It's been out for just over a year now. But it's got the slimmer lines for sporting and new F1 stock. Good looking wood on this one. Sure is. So I noticed you have a, quite a monstrosity over here of a, of a bolt action gun. What exactly is that? So this is a bench rest gun. So you use them a lot for F class, but it's very heavy, heavy, heavy bull barrel, single shot. It's got about a quarter ounce trigger pull on it. Oh, wow. Go ahead and cycle it and pull that trigger if you want. 
but you just breathe on it and it goes off. Oh my. <laughs> I did not intend to pull the trigger. That's exactly how it's <laughs> intended. Wow. You, uh, that sure was. The more it surprises you, the more accurate you are. <laughs> because we're a federal dealer, we're, we have access to the Quiet Cat line. So now we're a Quiet Cat dealer. This is the top of the line model. This is the uh, Ibex. And it got its name because it was tested up in the high mountains where the Ibex live. But these are all either full pedal full electric or pedal assist. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah, that is awesome. Take it for a spin if you want. Okay. I'm gonna film you the whole time because I'm just waiting to see a face Look, plant. I don't need to paddle at all. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, I'm sold. These are sick. <laughs> These are sick. No, this is really cool. I like this thing. And I could see adding just a shotgun holster, then I could do sporting clips with this too. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be way cheaper than my can am While JP decided that he was going to go shooting in the rain, Jeremy Smock and I decided to head out into Tucson to check out some of the attractions. Now in a lot of these videos, the guys and I like to pick out a restaurant to recommend. JP is actually from Tucson and went to college here and he picked out this place. Alright, so Jeremy, tell us about this Hawaiian food. So, this is Calbee here. I got a double order because this is I'm coming back to Tucson where I'm from, I'm Hawaiian. This is the food of my people that absolutely love it. And if I came to Tucson and didn't eat here, I'm pretty sure my ancestors would be upset. So, <laughs> and then there's Spam Musubi here. It's their rice um, with their Spam. It's wrapped in nori. And uh, what they do is they put uh, a little bit of teriyaki sauce in between here. Um, no, I understand what he said about the Spam. I did not order the Spam. So, after a dinner of Hawaiian short ribs and Spam sushi, uh, our trip had come to an end. Now, we had a fantastic time at Coyote Springs, and I want to start off by saying this place should really be on your shooting bucket list. It's a unique environment. The targets are great. They've got a great U.S. Open plan for all of us, and we're just as excited as we could possibly be. Now, there are still some spots open for a lot of the events on Score Chaser, so rush on over there and get registered while you still can. And uh, the guys and I, we have our tickets booked, and we hope to see you there. 